Windows running on a Mac has always fascinated me. So when Microsoft announced the latest version of Windows, that is Windows 11, I knew I had to install it on my MacBook Air and test it out for myself. Hey guys, Tech Guy Charlie here. Welcome back to the channel and this is Windows 11 running on an early 2015 MacBook Air. Alright, so I hope the camera positioning is much better and I'm also using a wireless mouse so that it's easier for me to demonstrate. Now before we do anything else, let's check out the build number. So command R, Vinver. So this is the build number 22000.51. So like I said in my intro video, this is an early 2015 Apple MacBook Air running Windows 11. Now the most important thing to note over here is that it is running via bootcamp. So Windows 11 is actually running natively on the hardware of this computer. Oh, and by the way, guys, I did not have a single driver issue after installing Windows 11. The Apple Bootcamp installer did everything by itself. So we have functional Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of our display drivers are working. So we do have Intel HD graphics control panel right over here. So that actually gives us a lot of opportunity to test out the performance of Windows 11 on this sort of a hardware. Now, speaking of the hardware, if we right click the start button, by the way, this is the new start menu. So right clicking the start button, we can go to task manager and you will see the processor is a Core i5-5250U. So this processor is actually an unsupported CPU. So you won't find this model number on the official Windows 11 supported processor list that Microsoft has released. Plus this early 2015 MacBook Air has four gigabytes of RAM. So this is the minimum amount of memory that you need to get Windows 11 working. I'll talk about how I got Windows 11 to install on an unsupported CPU. Plus there's also no TPM 2.0 on a MacBook Air, but the procedure is almost identical to how you install Windows 10. But first, let's take a look at Windows 11 itself. First off, the new start menu. So this is the brand new start menu. You have all apps button over here and you can see this is actually a little bit translucent so you can see your background. Tap on all apps to see everything that is installed on your PC. Now, if you right click on an application icon, you can select pin to start and it will be pinned over here. So these are your pinned applications in the start menu. And that is your power button right over there. Another thing that has seen a significant redesign is the file explorer. So this is how the new file explorer looks like. Let's go to this PC and you will see the traditional ribbon thingy has gone away. So they have simplified everything over here. And since we are over here, let's see how much space Windows 11 has taken up. By the way, this is the new right click menu, kind of looks nice. So let's go to properties. And as you can see, Windows installation by itself takes around 27 gigabytes of space. And this being a 128 gigabyte MacBook Air, you're pretty much limited to what you can do when you install Windows via bootcamp. And speaking of the right click menu, let's go back to our desktop. If you right click, this is the sort of a menu you will be greeted with. If you want to create something new, you have the new folder option over here, text document. And if you install more apps, they will show up over here. Now you still have the traditional menu. You can go over here to show more options and that will open the traditional right click menu of Windows. So you have the refresh button over here. So now let's go to personalize and let me show you some Windows 11 themes. So right click on the desktop and just tap on personalize and that will take you to the personalization settings. Now by default, Windows 11 comes with this light theme and my camera kind of freaks out when the screen becomes white. You can see all that pattern over there. It's not visible in real life, it's just the camera. So that's why I had the dark theme selected. But Windows 11 does come with some really nice themes. And this is my personal favorite. It kind of changes into this purplish color. So this one looks really, really nice. Now, if you are using a Windows 10 machine, you will realize that the personalization menu on Windows 10 is completely different compared to what you get on Windows 11. So on Windows 10, it used to look like this. I'll put a screenshot of this on the screen right now so you guys can compare. So now you get access to themes right in front over here. Another thing that has changed on Windows 11 is the Action Center. If you don't know what Action Center is, there used to be a button on the right side of the Start menu and that opens the Action Center where you have some toggle buttons and this also shows you notifications on Windows 10. 
Now on Windows 11, this thing has changed. If you want to see your notifications, you will need to tap on the clock and that opens up the calendar and shows you the different notifications you've got. Now, if you want to see those toggle icons or better known as quick settings, you will need to tap on any of these three icons and you can see Windows is automatically highlighting this area. So clicking on this will open up the quick settings menu. And over here, you have the Wi-Fi toggle button, Bluetooth toggle button. You can switch Bluetooth on and off and some other quick setting toggle buttons. You have the volume control and the brightness control over here. You can see the battery icon. And if you tap on the battery icon, this will take you to the power and battery menu inside the main settings. And you can see this one has also been completely redesigned. Now let's open this thing back up. And if you right click over here, you will be able to edit these quick settings button. You will be able to remove them or add something else from over here, just like that. Now, if you want to go to the main system settings, you can click over here and then click on the gear icon. And that will take you to the main system settings, which again, you can see has been completely redesigned. Now we're not going to deep dive into the Windows settings, otherwise this video will become like 30 minutes long, but this should give you a brief idea of how the new system settings look like. So we're going to close this. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you guys, you can also now reposition the start menu. So if you don't like this middle position, you can right click on the taskbar, go to taskbar settings, tap on taskbar behaviors, and from over here, change the alignment to the left side. So that will put the start menu on to the left, but I prefer leaving it on center. Also, another thing that's new in Windows 11 is widgets. So if you tap on the widgets icon, that will open up this sidebar thingy and you have some widgets over here. Now, I would like to see a feature where I'm able to drag and drop these widgets onto the desktop. If I do it now, it just puts an icon on the desktop linking it to MSN. So I would like to see a feature similar to Windows Vista where you can have a standalone widget on the desktop. So maybe Microsoft will include that in the future. Fingers crossed they do so. So I guess that covers all of the major new features of Windows 11. Oh, and by the way, what's not included in this build is the ability to run Android apps through the Microsoft Store. So that will come in the future builds. If it does, I might make a video on it depending on how this video performs. But yeah, right now you cannot run Android apps through the Microsoft Store. Now coming to the activation of Windows 11. Well, I activated my copy of Windows 11 Home on the MacBook Air using a Windows 10 Home retail product key, which I had purchased a couple of years ago. As you can see, my copy of Windows 11 Home activated just fine with a Windows 10 home product key and now under activation state it says windows is activated with a digital license so i'm guessing the product key is now linked onto the hardware of the macbook air and if i need to install windows 11 on it in the future it should activate by itself now the biggest advantage of activating windows is that all of the settings under personalization are now unlocked so yes, you can activate your copy of Windows 11 using a Windows 10 product key. I think OEM keys should also work just fine, but I activated mine with a proper retail product key. And if you are wondering, yes, I do have a proper licensed copy of Windows 10 Home and Pro. So how does Windows 11 perform like on an early 2015 MacBook Air? Well, it performs pretty much the same as Windows 10 would on a 5th generation Core i5 CPU running with 4GB of RAM. I mean, you have to keep in mind the i5 5250U is a 5th generation CPU. So if I'm not mistaken, it was announced in Q1 of 2015. So now in 2021, that makes it 6 years old. And in late 2021, it's kind of showing its age. And it's very obvious when you are browsing the internet. So this is Google Chrome. and Initially, the pages load up fairly quickly, but as you scroll through the pages, you will notice a bit of lag and the processor kind of struggles a little bit. So let's open up task manager. And if I go to performance, you can see the CPU is kind of pinned at 100%. So I've seen a similar kind of behavior when I was using Windows 10 on this machine, the MacBook Air. So yes, that fifth generation core i5 CPU is a bit dated now. But to be very honest, general purpose tasks like browsing the internet, watching YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, I think this CPU will do just fine. 
and let's play a video on YouTube. Let's play one of my own videos. Let's play this one and you will see that it does perform pretty okay. The video is running nice and smooth. We are watching it in 1080p and I can move the window around and it is fairly smooth. So when it comes to YouTube video playback, this thing has no issues playing back the video. The RAM is pretty much maxed out here, so that four gigabytes of RAM is not gonna cut it in 2021. So yeah, when it comes to watching videos on YouTube, this computer does just fine. Same goes for browsing the internet. There are some random lags here and there, but once the page loads up, the computer does just fine. Now I can also stream 4K 60 FPS videos without having any issues off my network server. I'll show you that. So in the details, you can see it's a 4K 3840 into 2160, 60 frames per second video. And you will see this machine has absolutely no issues playing back 4K 60 FPS videos. And even when it's running OS X, it has no issues playing back 4K 60 videos. They do play back quite smoothly. So let's go back to task manager. And as you can see, oops, as you can see, it is offloading the video processing onto the integrated GPU. Although take a look at that RAM usage, it's almost maxed out. Uh, one thing I do wanna check is the temperatures. So let's open up HW monitor. I did install it. So I think it is thermal throttling. So check this out. Our CPU is at 100 degrees Celsius. So that's why it is lagging a little bit. The CPU is throttling. Yeah, the experience is not that great, right guys? Uh, so it goes back and forth between 1.6 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. So the culprit over here is the cooling solution that Apple has included in the MacBook Air. I mean, that puny little heatsink is just not enough to cool the MacBook Air CPU when it's under full load. But all said and done, it's able to play back 4K 60 FPS videos without having any issues. So that's a good sign, but the CPU is indeed overheating. All right, so I guess that's pretty much all there is to it. I really thought I'd play some games and show you guys how they perform. But because we have Intel HD Graphics 6000, we are really limited to what we can do on this machine. Even basic games like Dota 2 will not run properly even if you set them to the lowest settings. That's because of the weak GPU. So really the only way to play games on a MacBook Air is to stream them off your gaming PC which you can easily do if you have Steam installed and even if you are running Mac OS you can still do this kind of a thing. So really no point installing Windows if you just want to game. Well unless you want to play a game on the Mac itself which is not available in Mac OS. But yeah, in-home streaming is the best way you can stream games. You can even play with everything maxed out because the game is actually running on your gaming PC. So that is why I'm not gonna do a gaming review on the MacBook Air running Windows 11. Anyways, we are now back in Mac OS and you might wanna know how I installed Windows 11 on an early 2015 MacBook Air with an unsupported CPU. Well, the installation process of Windows 11 is exactly the same the way you install Windows 10 using Bootcamp. So the first thing that you will need to do is download a Windows 11 ISO. I'm not gonna show you how to do that for obvious reasons. After that, you will need to open up the Bootcamp Assistant. Click on continue, repartition the hard drive, give the Windows partition at least 50 gigabytes to work with. Then click over here, point the Bootcamp Assistant to the Windows 11 ISO. Now, even though it says over here, choose Windows 10 ISO file, Windows 11 ISO did work just fine. Anyways, after you choose the ISO file, click on install and the MacBook will automatically do its thing and then it will restart into the Windows setup. Then comes the tricky part. Because the MacBook Air does not have TPM 2.0, you will get an error while installing Windows 11. So at that point of time, you will need to make two registry changes. I followed the guide on digit.in. So they have a fantastic guide on how to bypass the Windows 11 TPM requirement. It's actually very easy. You just need to make two registry entries. I'll put a link to this website in the video description. I'm not gonna show you how to do that because then the video will become like 20 minutes long. But yeah, you need to make two registry entries while the Windows setup is going on and that will bypass the TPM requirement. And after that, the setup process is pretty much seamless. 
Maybe when the official Windows 11 ISOs are available, I'll make a video on how to install it on a MacBook Air. But that does it for this video. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos like these. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to press the thumbs up button. That helps a lot. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.